What's up everyone? Today I want to talk about why I find the audio editing workflow in Bitwig problematic when it comes to breaks and why I find the workflow that is in Cubase way better. So I hope that some Bitwig users also watch this because Bitwig users often think that Bitwig is like the most advanced DAW of all time and I think in many ways it is otherwise I wouldn't use it. But this is like one of the most crappiest aspects about it and uh, I will show you why. So let me introduce you to this little break here. I already sliced it into its slices. Now we have little gaps between the breaks and what I typically want to do then is resampling the slices individually but there is no offline processing in Bitwig so I cannot really do that. Maybe I could select them all and select repitch and oh no now the starting points are not on the same points anymore so I guess you have to bounce in place or something. Yeah, and then you can use the repitch mode to change their length. However, if you go really far, then they overlap each other. And if you go back, then, oh no, all of the starting points of the samples have changed because it didn't remember where it started before it was like overridden. Bitwig doesn't have the concept of audio events being on top of each other in the same track. So you cannot really do that. You can't just play around with the speed of the individual slices to find some speed where they overlap a little bit. So what you would have to do instead is add another track and then you can play around with it to some extent. And then when you found like something where it overlaps on all of the slices a little bit for this particular speed. Then you can check if it sounds good. And now you can bring them back into the spot where you want to have them. But it's a bit destructive because then you cannot let the events remember, you know, the full length that they can have. You now have to commit to these new lengths. Oh shit, I forgot something. I didn't see that. Now what, what do I do now? I guess I can drag this down again. Oh no, I have to do all of the things again. Does that fit now? Okay, good. So this was already like not as comfy as I would want it to be in the most advanced door of all time. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. Why is this now wrong? Where well, I can just cheat a little bit here because I already knew that there is a little bit of space left. Okay, great. So that works. Now let's introduce swing because swing is always a nice feature and you do that in Bitwig by using this section of the UI. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Why does it not do that? What? Now I'm confused. Let's load up a synthesizer instead. Okay, so this works. There is swing on the synthesizer. Actually, let's match it completely. Okay, so now we would expect the ghost notes to be a little bit shifted. They are kind of not. They are just still exactly where I put them. So how do I apply swing to that? No, that's weird actually. Because when I first tried this some months ago, it was still the case that when you have added swing to the project, then it would like still show the audio events like this, but in the background, shift them somewhere else and that was problematic because it would open the gaps again and you cannot see them and you cannot edit them that way and then i told the support about this problem and they didn't have a solution to it and now it seems that audio events are not even moved by swing anymore so i guess their solution was to just remove the swing feature entirely from audio and only have it on MIDI. But that doesn't make it a lot better because that just means that the MIDI stuff is now in the state where you cannot really see what it's doing. You can only guess because you know that you have swing enabled and you can hear it, but just from seeing you cannot see what it's doing. 
and that just feels weird to me. I mean, imagine we were on a really low BPM. And now listen to this. You know, it's, it just comes delayed to what you are seeing. It's not good for working on the details of a song. Like you just want to see exactly what's going on, except if you don't take it too seriously with the swing anyway, and you just want to have a laid back feel. But you know, you, you might want to have sort of an energetic swing. At least that's what I often go for, so I cannot do that here. Now with this rant, you might be wondering what does Cubase make better to have a better workflow? So here we are in Cubase and I have a break in here as well. So now let's talk about the first thing. I can change the BPM of the project and it, well, there are the gaps again. And when I turn it up, the gaps are gone again. And when I turn it down, the gaps are there just as they were before again. And the reason for that is because you can just overlap things like so. And then you can see it is behind the other things because there can be multiple things on top of each other. And that means you can also just go back. And yeah, that enables just workflows like that. Uh, the only thing that Cubase doesn't do as good as Bitwig is automatic crossfades. Like when you're turning up this thing, you can hear that there is clickiness. Okay, I just didn't hear it, but sometimes you can hear it on some configurations because in Bitwig you always get these nice auto crossfades and I, I don't know, I didn't see that feature here in Cubase yet, so I guess it's not there. But apart from that, Cubase workflow already is a little bit easier. Which was the hotkey for offline effects, right? This one? No, this? No. There was a... Shit. There was a hotkey for offline effects. Oh, that was the one. F7. Okay. And in here I can just say pitch shift. Um, it asks me if it should make a new version for every time I apply changes or if it should override the existing sample. Don't ask me again and always make a new version so that it's non-destructive. And now we can just add pitch shifts and it will render on all of these samples individually. <laughs> Now that sounds pretty crappy because it uses the Ampex time stretch mode, no time correction. So now I can just try to find a pitch on which this sounds pretty nice. Now we've actually seen a Cubase bug in which it just ignores where the ending of the file was for me and added some of the stuff that came after it again into the sample. But as you can see, even that weird bug didn't like mess a lot with my configuration because the things are still on top of each other in the right sequence. So if I just change the speed now, then I am back to a sound that sounds good. Pretty fast though. Yeah, I think that's still okay, even though there is a little bit of a double thingy here. But I, I cannot hear it very well, so it's it's okay. So this is the workflow in Cubase. You can just pitch shift stuff freely without thinking about it, without making another track. And then you can overlay them freely, and that's cool. And at the end, when you're done with everything, you can make it a little bit finer by, for example, by getting the all of these events out of there. Sometimes you cannot touch them down here. And that's the case when they are just too far in it. I don't know why they um, implemented it like that. Okay, uh, to be honest, this is pretty annoying. So this is definitely something that um, should be fixed in Cubase to make it easy to work with. Because when you have all of these overlapping samples, you know, you can really lose track of what's what in here. But you know, at least you got the breakbeat done and then you just have to tidy up at the end, which is annoying, but at least it's like not a deal breaker or something. You can do that. So neither Cubase nor Bitwig is perfect when it comes to that. I could imagine a better solution than both of them, but this is like overall 
better. And now the next point is swing. So here we have the swing settings and you can dial in some swing. For example, 26% swing. You can already see it here visualized. This is what it's going to be like. Now I can select all of these things and press Q. Did you see the difference? Let me go back. Q. Back. Q. So you see the ghost notes have shifted. I should probably just fix it like this here. Boom. Yeah. Okay. I once knew the hotkeys for disabling snap and stuff like that. That also makes you faster in this application. I forgot them, so I cannot use them. Okay, everything sounds good except for of these hiccup thingies. I will just replace them now. So here we have one of these ghost notes, right? And you can see the grid doesn't line up with what's going on. But the reason for that is because we have unzoom unpassen activated. We could also set it to quantization. And now it shows us the exact quantization that we currently have, which is tied to the swing settings. And now whatever we do, if it's with MIDI or if it's with audio, we can see what it's like on the grid. And we can see it reflected on the audio. And yeah, if I was to write MIDI now, and you can already imagine, it would also show for the MIDI. Uh, down here, we still have quantization settings wrong, I think. Yeah. So here, there it is. What? <laughs> Why did it show that wrong? Yeah, Cubase is not perfect. Definitely not. But, you know, now we have... Um, the notes showing correctly with the right quantization as well. So we can perfectly see what's going on. I can understand why Bitweek went for th for this other type of uh, swing setting because in Bitweek you can change the swing setting at any time. Just try a different swing setting without having to re-quantize a lot of stuff and be a little bit more playful about it. It's good for generative music. It is the door for generative music, to be honest. So if you make generative music, then you might not run into this problem at all. I like generative music, but I'm also sort of an arranger type of music um, creator. So I like when things are just set in stone and I want to set the swing in stone. And if I were to change sw a swing here in Cubase, I would have to go into the swing setting again, select a new swing and then um, select everything and hit Q again. And now I have to make sure again that everything works with my samples and stuff. Um, so as you can see, the MIDI does not work anymore. The length of this note is not fitting anymore. And the length of this note as well. Sometimes it can be cool, but usually you just have to fix that. And it is a little bit tedious when the project's already bigger, but at least you can see that the problem is there and you can address it. And you know, that's just my point about Bitwig. You cannot address the issue. It just tries to make it easy for you. Yeah, like, yeah, we are the laid back door. Just do what you want. It's easy. You are done in two seconds. It doesn't sound good, but you are done. And meanwhile, Cubase is like, hmm, everything you do will take you hours. But once you're done, it's really good. And I think Bitwig should learn a little bit from that. Maybe find a good point in the middle where you neither force people to take really long for everything, but also not just accept that the feature is not very usable. Because I would rather take long for something than not be able to use it at all. And I really can't use the swing feature in, in Bitwig. It's just too weird. It's, it, it doesn't give me any control on the sound anymore. I don't like that. So I made this video so that more people are aware that it can work like this as well. And it's pretty cool.